Hello everyone, this is Fiona at Drawings in a Drawer. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. If you're not, on here we discuss everything watercolour, so if that is something that might interest you, please be sure to subscribe and to hit the notification bell, so you will be notified every time I upload a video, which is usually on a Sunday, if I'm being good. Today we're going to talk about the expressive watercolour painting uh, and especially portraiture. Now the reason why I'm talking about this is because when I approached watercolour it was exactly because I wanted to paint expressive watercolour portraits. I had seen some artists paint this kind of portrait being extremely loose and when I looked into it I could not find tutorials or people who taught you how to paint that kind of portrait. It is not easy to teach yourself how to paint an extremely expressive and loose portrait and there was literally no one out there teaching them, at least not in English, not in Italian, not even uh, in Spanish, not that I came across, not the kind of portrait I wanted to paint. Watercolour is a very particular medium, it is very difficult to control, it can drive you nuts. It's a learning process which lasts your whole life and that is the beauty of watercolour. It's a delicate balance between water and paint and how thick or thin or diluted a mixture is. So if nobody's told you that and for some reason nobody told me that in the beginning then I'm telling you now. That is one of the most difficult things about watercolour, controlling the balance between water and paint. Today I'm going to show you how to paint the expressive watercolour portrait, how to let go. As I speak I have already filmed the video and I've already painted two portraits which I think I will be showing you both of these portraits in this video and I realised that I felt that it was being observed by the camera. I've spoken about this before on this channel. I sometimes don't like painting in front of the camera because I feel in a way judged even I know I can erase the footage if I don't like what I've done or if the paintings didn't turn out right or if I just didn't like the way I spoke on camera. So it's irrational but it's still there and I felt myself holding back, I felt myself trying to gain control and the portraits are not as expressive as I would have liked them to be, uh, they're not as loose more than as expressive as I would like them to be. So I've decided to make a small short series, maybe a couple of episodes or three episodes where next week I'm going to try and gradually forget about the camera, I'll paint all week and produce watercolour portraits that are much looser. Now if you're in the same position I was in in 2019 looking for someone to teach me all about expressive watercolour portrait, then you've come to the right place with this specific kind of technique, if we want to call it technique, we can call it approach, we can call it angle, you can call it whatever you want, but this is why we are here. Just stay tuned on this channel because we're going to learn so much together and I can guarantee you it's going to be so much fun. Creativity is such a positive outlet at any age. It can allow you to discover things of yourself or strengths that you have that you didn't even know were there. And the happiness and the joy that maybe for some reason are lacking in your life right now. So let's dive right into it. I've really been feeling excited about painting recently and I've been painting very fast, especially inside my sketchbook and experimenting a lot. I am really happy with some of the pieces that I've done recently and it's felt so liberating to be able to create without thinking and with the same sense of novelty and wonder that I felt when I first started painting with watercolour. With watercolour it's always a very delicate balance between allowing it to guide you towards what it can do and trying to control it. This sometimes causes you to fall out with this medium, almost like in a relationship. I came across this old block of Cancer Moulin du Roi. It's 100% cotton, but it's one of the first papers that I used, apparently, because I found some of my very early pieces from 2019 inside it and I was surprised, to say the least, by looking at how far I've come really since then because though I can see that my style is already there, the drawing skills and the proportions and also 
my technique seem very distant from what they are now and it doesn't seem that long ago actually. Looking back on this I can see that I had no idea what I was doing with watercolour and I didn't know what I know now which I've learned through experience mostly. So I decided to paint in this block again after years to see if it was the paper's fault or my fault. I hope I can't blame the paper for this. There are several ways you can paint in an expressive way and one is using unusual colours, for example, in a portrait. Another one is to show your brush strokes. In watercolour we can also vary how much water we use. Usually through accidents we will discover that we can create hard edges and blooms and really interesting effects, which will then become also very frustrating because we will not be able to recreate them on purpose and when we decide to. So it's always a bit of a compromise. You allow watercolour to be free, which is its nature, and at the same time you see what it offers you when that happens. If you don't give in sometimes and just let watercolour be watercolour, it will be very hard to discover what this medium can actually do. But more than that, it will be hard for you to discover what you truly love about it. Painting expressive or painting loose can be scary. I don't know why, let me know in the comments if you relate to this, but it can be scary, like falling down a hole and you don't know where you're going to end up. You fought so hard to learn these skills and to understand how watercolour worked and then suddenly you are feeling this urge to let go. And for the longest time that fear kept me back. I preferred to paint inside the box, so to speak, because it was easier for me to try and paint to get something that I knew I would love, which didn't really happen most of the time anyway, and it was less important to experiment. Now things have changed and for me it's more important to experiment because I know that through experimenting there will be evolution. I've overall become less judgmental about my pieces. I look at them not as a whole, but I look at specific areas where something has happened that interests me and I will try to replicate that. I will discover new things. Painting this way also allows you to paint faster as you paint in a more impulsive and instinctive manner. And for me, that is such a huge bonus because I am so tired of spending more than two days on a painting. All the pieces you see here were done in the space of an hour or just a few hours. I was hoping that by uploading on here maybe I would find other people who are on the same journey as me or who have just started out on this journey and that we can show up together every Sunday and paint together and share your work or rather our work and if you want to join the Facebook group Fiona De Painters Watercolour Students you can find a community there where everybody shares their work.
for the second piece, I was even less loose than it was for the first one, even though the first one is considered expressive and loose, but I wanted to kind of push it a little bit further. But with the second piece, I find that I held myself back even more, and that's possibly because I was painting a subject which I don't paint particularly often and maybe that was a challenge in itself so even though I think that I started off quite well I kind of tended to pull the brakes a little as I went along. I've come to realise that painting expressive also sometimes means knowing when to stop or knowing when to stop in certain areas and bringing the focus more to other areas, which means that not everything has to be in focus. There can be some things that are a little bit more hazy and others which are sharper. Now, if you're on here and you like this way of painting, it's a kind of thing that you want to paint yourself. Don't worry if you're just starting out. I would really love to create a community where we can paint together and where everyone who likes a style can paint fearlessly and have fun and be excited about something again and tap into that part of themselves that, as I said in the introduction, maybe they didn't even know existed. And if by any chance you're thinking, oh no, I'm too old for this, or I don't know how to draw, you're never too old and drawing isn't even fundamental when it comes to painting. You can always trace, there's no harm in that. If you've been watching this video up till now, first and foremost, thank you so much and you're an absolute rock star. But more than anything, consider joining me on here every Sunday and connecting with me. You can connect with me on Instagram, you can connect with me on Facebook. Again, I have a group over there where you can share your work. I have a patron, but you don't need to do any of these things, but show up every Sunday and paint. If you need encouragement, I can definitely give you that. Just leave a comment down below or reach out to me in DMs on Instagram. I will be happy to help you if you have any doubts. Next Sunday, I'm going to upload the second episode of the Expressive Watercolour Portrait and I hope you will be here for that. See you soon and have a great week. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.